Hello and welcome to another edition of GNET TV's In-Depth Series. I'm Andrew McKeever, the News Director here at GNET TV's News Project, and it's a pleasure to have you with us today. Today is Thursday, June 21st, and it's also our pleasure to have with us today two special guests in the studio here to talk to us about some exciting things going, that will be going on at the Southern Vermont Arts Center this summer. With us is Judy McCormick, who is the Chairwoman of the Southern Vermont Arts Center's Board of Directors, and Nick Ihaz, who is a friend of the Arts Center and a resident from Danby, and welcome to both of you. Thank, Thank you. you. So, um, one of the big things that's uh, going to be going on at the Arts Center this summer is this new concert series, Friday Night Live. Yes. Um, and it sounds pretty exciting. You have six bands coming uh, that will, uh, I'm sure, going to be uh, of great interest to many local residents. So, uh, Nick, tell us a little bit about this. How did, how did this all come to be? Well, uh, I spent my life in a world of finance, but my three daughters, who basically grew up here in Vermont, uh, own several companies, they help each other out, and one of them happens to be a concert promoting uh, entity called the Behind the Moon Entertainment. And through them, I, I have access to a lot of interesting musicians and bands and, and some fairly well-known, um, excellent uh, entertainment. So uh, it's a long story how we came here, but anyway, for, for for this year, we're doing six concerts, and uh, we named them uh, Friday Night Live, and we're going to do, try to do something different with uh, um, Carolyn Blitz, who's, who just joined the board, and um, Judith's help. We're going to have some food trucks and some local beer, some craft beer, and six really, really interesting shows, which I can get into later. And, and, uh, well, this sounds like a bit of a departure from uh what probably a lot of people expect to find up at the Arts Center. On well, I think that hill. so many people think of the Arts Center as um, very old-fashioned, <laughs> you know, with the art and, and with the music available, which is all wonderful and, and a very base of what the Arts Center has been and, and it is at this point as well. But we really wanted to connect with the community and bring people up who, to have fun and to really see the art center as, wow, uh, we've got some place to go on Friday night. We can bring the kids or I can bring my date. <laughs> and I can go up there and yeah. I can have dinner out of the food trucks and have some craft beer or maybe a glass of wine and listen to the bands and maybe walk around, have the doors open and be able to just uh, have a great Friday night. So they'd be able to walk into the art center and check out some of the galleries and the paintings. The, well, I think the art center, the galleries won't be open at that time, but the Arkell Lounge and the Arkell Pavilion mm -hmm. will be, and that's a 400 seat capacity. Yeah. So, the whole town can show up. Oh, yeah. I think we got 400 people here. Yeah. Um, oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Last count, I believe, 4,000. I think. Yeah. Uh, since so, uh, so, so, who are going to be the the first the first band that's coming is the Starline Rhythm Boys on Friday, July 6th. Yeah. What I, I tried to do this year was to get some local talent here. That uh, the Starline Rhythm Boys are pretty well known throughout the state, but I wanted to in, uh, interject some truly local. Uh, talent. I don't know. Uh, a lot of people may know Dory Reed, who happens to be two times Vermont State fiddle champion. So she's going to share the stage with them. And uh, Will Mosheim, who grew up with my kids and used to play in our garage, he now <laughs> makes banjos and he's a phenomenal <laughs> banjo player. So yeah. he'll be a part of it also. Oh, great, yeah. great. He was uh, he was with a, a local bluegrass band. I remember hearing them play. Uh, yeah. Goldtown, right? Yes, he's very if talented. If I recall correctly. Well, that'll be kind of fun. And so then you have a couple of other groups coming, uh, I guess, every Friday, every Friday night, almost every Friday night, next on the 13th, the 27th, uh, August 3rd, yeah. the 10th, and the 24th. So, uh, we, you know, this, three, this started three years ago when one of the board members, who happens to be my neighbor, was aware of the fact what my kids were involved in. So he asked me if I could book some of these uh, events. And uh, I grew up in Budapest, Hungary. I was born right in the middle of the war and under communism. And when I'm talking about communism, it was like the Iron Curtain. Nothing came into that country. So they jammed all the radio stations. So all I ever heard was Borden and Tchaikovsky 
And I don't know about you, but I never had the urge to tap my feet to Night on Bald Mountain. <laughs> so, so when we escaped in 1956, literally the first time I ever saw a banana and the first time I ever heard Tutti Frutti rock and roll. And, and I said, life wow, has this changed. is something. So it was. I mean, you know, I became a fan to the extent that, you know, 20 years ago we had Jerry Lee Lewis playing Danby. Sure. You know? So that leads me to look at, look at all this talent and have, having a lot of fun with it. So the second one uh, is Guy Davis, uh, who's a blues man, and according to some people, since B.B. King passed on, he's supposed to be the king of blues, and he has just got a Grammy nomination for the best traditional blues album of the year, and we will have a local Bob Standard open up. Okay. So that will excite some of the local people. And a dangerous bluesman or whatever. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> um, wow, well, well uh, that, that's pretty neat. Um, so you were saying earlier that folks can bring, uh, what, they'll be able to buy their own dinner and uh, and exactly beverage, you know if you refreshments come up and be able to do the things that you think would complete your Friday night, you know, be able to go out to dinner, sort of, kind of picnic like, <laughs> and then come hear some great music, and it, it, there's almost nothing better than that for. Good Friday night in the summertime. Okay, so we can picnic out on the green outside yep. the Arkell Pavilion. Picnic tables, and, and you know, it'll be wonderful. I, I guarantee the weather's going to be great every Friday night. Okay. Yep, sun <laughs> is just going to gonna be out. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, um, I, there are a couple of other concerts I, that we want to uh, drill down and, and get into also, but. Uh, I know that you also have several other exhibits uh, happening at the Art Center as well that, you know, if folks wander up there on a Friday night to hear some good music, they might think, oh, I want to come back here tomorrow to see this other exhibit. Exactly, and we're very excited about the next show that's opening in the Wilson Gallery, which is George Kalinske, and George Kalinske has been the uh, photographer for Madison Square Garden for 50 years. And he has been personal friends with Frank Sinatra and Muhammad Ali, and has been able to get some very significant and very personal photographs of many champions that have played in Madison Square Garden. And these are beautiful, huge photographs, black and white, that George has done in, uh, along his career. He's a very well-respected uh, photographer artist, and also lives up in Dorset in uh, his altar time. And we will be very excited. June 30th is the opening, 4 to 6 in the afternoon, and the show will run for two weeks after that as well. But there are many other shows with our local artist members. We'll have the, our, our artist member show in the middle of July. July 14th is opening, and we have solo shows on now, and yeah, lots of art classes and wonderful um, nationally known artists teaching classes and we've really expanded our children's workshops so find that that's really a nice alternative in this town to be able to you know have a, have something very creative for your children to do in the summertime well I recall about a year or so ago when when we did our first interview uh, and when um, when Elizabeth Paxson your new executive director was being brought on board um, you both talked at the time about uh, wanting to kind of uh, engage more closely with the town and the community, and uh, it sounds like this is a big step in that direction. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, it's it it's sometimes you know going we used, we call it up on the hill, and that <laughs> there's like a barrier there when you think of oh my god I have to get up the hill. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to walk. There's a driveway you can drive up. Yeah. So. <laughs> It's a wonderful place to come. I mean, there's so many things about the Art Center, the, the campus itself, the land on which all of these buildings are set. It is a wonderful place to bring your dog and go for a walk, the sculpture garden down at the bottom of the hill. We, we've had some incredibly substantial sculptures down there, and we've cut the paths so you can walk around in the, the paths to each of the sculptures. And yeah. it's really a beautiful place to go. And now you have that Cafe Sora, which I think the food is over this fabulous. Exactly. Exactly, yeah. Cafe Sora. It's a, it's wonderfully won, run. It's Japanese and by two Japanese, and it's very traditional food, but with a little English catch to it, mm. or American mm. catch, I guess. Yeah, okay. okay. Best uh, of all worlds, then, huh? Exactly. Um, so, so back to these concerts again, uh, again, Nick. Um, 
I mean, you, you have three more coming in August. Uh, yeah. Blair, Carmen, uh, then a, a Stone, Rolling Stones tribute band, and, and Green Mountain Jam. Uh, what's yeah. that last one about? Is that uh, Green? Is well, that let, a, let me touch a little bit about this tribute band because that has a stigma attached to it. You know, sometimes Roll people right. hear uh, yeah. tribute band, they think of an Elvis impersonator in a parking lot somewhere. Right. And <laughs> I, I, you know, I take exception to that because. If, if uh, Horowitz is, is playing uh, Beethoven's Fifth, nobody's going to call it a tribute. So the, That's a good point. The, yeah. the, the trick is to find uh, somebody who's so talented. Well, first, they have to pass the test. They have to be able to play in Vegas, casinos, uh, what they call uh, Legends in Concert, which is a very special event, and they have to be played overseas. So if they're good enough to do that, sometimes they sound better than the original, believe it or not. So you have to close your eyes, and if you can't tell the difference, then I'm okay. <laughs> so uh, the next one is called The Boxers, and these gentlemen will do a Simon and Garfunkel uh, tribute. And then we have uh, Blair Carmen, and it's a very interesting, this, this man is, is, is a savant, I think he's a clone of Jerry Lee Lewis. Oh my gosh. And uh, he is the star of a traveling show that plays, I think, 200 nights a year called One Night in Memphis. And it's a true story about in Sun Studios where Colonel Phillips had Elvis, Carl Perkins, Jerry Lee Lewis, and Johnny Cash in. And they f started jamming before they became famous, and the tape was running, and they have this. And this, is, this became the, uh, uh, the, the Broadway show, A Million Dollar Quartet. But this version of it is called One Night in Memphis, and he plays the role of Jerry Lee Lewis. And he's a good family friend, and I have a video of him playing our Steinway. He he's just becomes a different person when he bangs on a piano. So that's going to be a night of rockabilly. Uh, and then, uh, let's see, what else. oh, the Rolling Stones, um, that speaks for itself, it's a seven-piece band. Uh, two a set of brothers do it, and then the last one we're going to close wait. with. Wait, wait, did they dress? Do they dress like the Rolling Stones? Yeah. Okay. But That's I mean, all I uh, wanted to know. Yeah, but I mean, Rolling it's, black or whatever. Not oh. like, not, yeah, I mean, the moves are there, you know, the whole, whole bit. <laughs> okay. Uh, and there's a black lady singer, you know, backup singer, and right. it's pretty good stuff. And then the last one, I thought that it, we put together something from the state, local talent, people from the state, and one, different music. Uh, Dave Keller is a famous blues throughout the state, the blues man. And then uh, the Aerolites, which is a rock band. And then Dory Reed and her husband, you know, with country music. So mm -hmm. that kind of puts it all together. And it should be a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, we're going to rock. Our cow. Sounds like yeah. A you lot can of dance in the aisles. Oh, yeah. okay. Yes. Well, that's good to know. Yes. Because uh, I remember going up to uh, one area theater, which shall remain nameless for right now, and <laughs> for this seeing seeing uh, yes. kind of a, 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 a performer I remembered from uh, a show we say a certain amount of time in the past, and deciding that hey, you know, I'm here to party and. Uh, <laughs> the guy in the blue suit came over and said, "Sir, you uh -oh. should really sit down." And I kind of like, "Huh? <laughs> yeah. How am I supposed to sit down?" But anyway, so we can dance. That's good to know. Exactly. Nice wide aisles there too. Yes. So that'll be helpful. For Last year we had a, a Johnny Cash tribute, and uh, my, I called my daughter and I said, "How do I find the best Johnny Cash man?" So he gave me his name, and uh, so I, I called him up and. Uh, Sheepishly, I start talking. I, I didn't know him, and he said, "Do you happen to know that it's three o'clock in the morning in Sydney, Australia?" <laughs> <laughs> he answered the I phone. Guess he answered the phone. He says, "I thought it was somebody from, uh, you know, some big booking agency or right. something." But anyway, we became friends, and he came up, and it's very funny because when I I didn't recognize him because he had blonde hair, but he had cowboy boots on. So I said, "That must be him." And he dyes his hair blonde because he looks so much like Johnny Cash that people bug him about the autographs and that kind of thing. Anyway, he came and there were a lot of dancing huh. in the aisles when he, he, he performed this year. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, it works. Mm. It works. So um, what, will be, what will be the follow-up to all that? I, I mean, uh, I'm assuming before we go over there, uh, we also have the Manchester Music Festival concerts, I guess, exactly. coming yes, back this summer course. as they've been for yes. many years now. Yeah. Many, Forty something many. years, if I recall yeah. correctly. Yeah. Um, they so were part of the Art Center when the Art Center first began. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they will also be doing their shows. I Absolutely, know. just as, as they have done in the past, and with their exciting new executive director. Yeah, okay. 
So uh, looking forward then past the summer into the fall, is there anything uh, on the agenda that uh, folks should know about? There's a great show coming up on September 8th. It's called Graffiti and Glass mm. with a lot of very nationally known glass artists as well as the Vermont Glass Guild, but also with graffiti. And uh, you know, it's a very new kind of art form and we've tried to find some interesting new ways of uh, interesting new media of art to uh, show at the Art Center and, and have it be exciting and interesting and sort of very progressive hmm. without right. losing touch with what, what yeah. we have been in the past. All right. Well, that sounds like that fits into the whole thing of trying to attract younger audiences or, yeah. or uh, you know, bringing uh, new people into the, into, the, into the fold while keeping the folks that have already been there Exactly. We, we have a little bit of everything. Good, good, good. So, uh, Nick, I know you did a couple of concerts uh, at the Art Center in years past. Uh, so this sounds like we're just taking things to a next, the next level yeah, here. Yeah, we did four shows last year, and it was more on a, uh, a. This year we wanted to just stick to kind of blues, country, and rock and roll. Last year, I, again, family friends, the former stars of Les Mis, did a Broadway show. Uh, and they had a Lincoln Center production, which really didn't sell that well because it's called O Sole Trio, and it's it's a, it's about the history of Italian music and influencing music in general. But we, I, I didn't know how to market that, and that may, people may have thought there was just going to be a bunch of Italian, you know, sonatas or something. So, which wouldn't have been but, so bad. Yeah, but it was wonderful. Matter of fact, you know, uh, uh, a good friend of mine and his wife came, and uh, this year is very generous and trying to help out, you know, with the concerts here because he was so impressed by what. He saw. Good, yeah. good, good. But I think this year, with in calling it Friday Night Live, we were trying to set up something that people knew that every Friday night there was going to be something going on at the Art Center in the Arkell Pavilion to, to bring, because your concerts last year were at very kind yeah. of sporadic dates, but now, now you're going to know where to go on Friday night. Mm -hmm. Right? So, See you yeah, I guess so. I mean, uh, <laughs> what more do I need to know here? Will this be something that you think uh, will continue on into the future? We, we hope so. Let's see. You know, last year I think we walked people up a little bit and then there was a little bit of a buzz. Mm -hmm. This year hopefully we'll create a lot of buzz, uh, a lot of interest, and then see how it goes, mm. you know? Yeah, I know, because it seemed like for a long time the center was pretty much associated, or the pavilion was associated with classical music or... Right. Uh, you're saying that, that's not material that was quote unquote contemporary. Yeah. Um, so this sounds like a real, you know, departure into yeah. something new, which would be kind yeah. of fun. I, I, I'm learning because, you know, for the last five years we spent our <coughs> winter down in a place called Spring Island, which is a, a small community in South Carolina. And everybody, it's all, you know, 65 and up. And they used to get local bands, et cetera. So we took it to a different level every year. And, uh, and now they like starving for this kind of uh, entertainment. So if people get weaned onto it, I think that up in Rutland they did a great job where now they bring in some serious talent and they sell, you know, 800 tickets. So mm -hmm. hopefully we'll catch on. All right. Well, great to have you both come by and tell us about this. And I'm sure that uh, folks watching will want to go right out there and go online and or whatever it is they mm -hmm. need to do. Or, yeah, you can or buy tickets online at the svac.org yeah. mm -hmm. website. Mm -hmm. uh, do you recommend that or can yes. people just show up and buy tickets there? Or? It would be better to buy your tickets online and have them before mm -hmm. you come. Okay. What if we sell out? Yeah, hopefully. Right, I guess. <laughs> well, I was just wondering, if you, have you had more than 400 people show up? Could people kind of watch from the sidelines there out in the field? Or um, look at the, yeah. the, the walls open up? I hadn't I thought about that. Yeah, that'd be tough. Because we'll let you know next week. Yeah. We'll come okay. back. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, it all sounds great. And uh, thanks again to both of you for coming by and Thank you telling so much, us about Andy. it. I've definitely Thank got to cancel a few of these dates in here to my calendar and make sure exactly. I... Exactly. You know, dance in the aisles or whatever it is we're okay. supposed to do. Okay, why not? Exactly. All right. Great. Well, thank you, uh, Judy, Nick, and thank you all for uh, being with us today. And uh, we'll see you again the next time. This has been GNAT TV's In Depth. Have a great day.